catheter ablation for ventricular arrhythmias. Definition. Ventricular arrhythmias. When an abnormal heart rhythm comes from the lower chambers of your heart, the ventricles, it is called a ventricular arrhythmia. Rhythms of this type include ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. Catheter ablation is an established treatment modality for a broad spectrum of ventricular tachycardias. Ventricular arrhythmias. Extra heartbeats originating in the lower chambers of the heart are called ventricular arrhythmias. These range from single extra beats called extrasystoles to prolonged or sustained episodes, as occurs in ventricular tachycardia or fibrillation. Ventricular tachycardia is a condition in which the larger chambers of the heart beat fast, but the rate in the upper chambers remain normal. It occurs usually as a complication of heart disease and can be dangerous if untreated, leading to blackouts. Ventricular fibrillation results from very fast, erratic and uncontrolled electrical signals in the ventricles. This is potentially a very dangerous rhythm as it causes the heart to quiver rather than beat, invariably leading to blackouts within seconds. The treatment of ventricular arrhythmias depends on the type of rhythm disturbance detected on the ECG or heart monitors. Sometimes no treatment is required other than lifestyle changes and avoiding triggers such as caffeine, alcohol, stress. If these fail to control symptoms, medication may be required, for example, beta blockers to slow down the heartbeat. Other more complex antiarrhythmic drugs such as amiodarone. Rarely more invasive procedures may be needed, and these include cardioversion, catheter ablation, an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. Applications in medicine. Catheter ablation has emerged as an important and effective treatment option for many recurrent ventricular arrhythmias. It is a procedure where areas of the heart are electrically inactivated or ablated to resolve an abnormal heart rhythm. Depending on activity level, the heart beats about 60 to 100 times per minute. It may be higher during exercise or lower at rest. A normal heart rate and rhythm ensures the delivery of oxygen-rich blood to all of the body's organs, such as the brain and lungs. A group of cells in the heart, called the cardiac conduction system, uses electrical impulses to control the speed and rhythm of each heartbeat. An abnormal heart rate or rhythm, called an arrhythmia, occurs when there's a problem with the heart's conduction system. Tachycardia is a type of arrhythmia where the heart beats too fast. Fibrillation is a type of arrhythmia where the heart beats irregularly and may be too fast. For certain types of arrhythmias, a catheter ablation procedure may be necessary to stop the heart tissue from causing the arrhythmia. After numbing a small area in the groin with a needle, the doctor will insert a short hollow tube called a catheter sheath into the femoral vein. Next, a long flexible tube called a catheter will be inserted through the sheath. The doctor will guide the catheter to the heart through a blood vessel that goes to the heart called the inferior vena cava. The location and progress of the catheter will be monitored. When the catheter reaches the heart, the doctor will guide it to the area that is causing the arrhythmia. The doctor will find the problem areas using a 3D map of the electrical activity of the patient's heart. 
the tip of the catheter will emit either hot energy or cold energy to ablate the tissue in this area. Ablation makes the treated area stop working. For an atrial arrhythmia, a doctor will ablate the atrial tissue causing it. If the affected tissues are small, well-defined areas, the procedure is called focal ablation. Or if the affected tissues are larger areas with more complex rhythm disturbances, the doctor may perform a procedure called ablation remodeling. Both types of ablation restore normal electrical impulses and prevent an arrhythmia from happening. If the cause of the arrhythmia is in the ventricle, the doctor can do either focal ablation or ablation remodeling to treat more complex arrhythmias of the ventricle. Pros and cons. Pros. It provides improvement in the quality of life. Catheter ablation offers an alternative therapy for preventing arrhythmias and can be life-saving when frequent episodes threaten survival. Advances in catheter technology, imaging, and mapping techniques have improved success rates for ablation. Cons. Ablation close to a coronary artery poses a risk of acute coronary occlusion and should be avoided. Patients with severe left ventricular dysfunction can have major hemodynamic consequences following prolonged procedures like this. As with any procedure in medicine, there are benefits and there are risks. The benefits of an EP procedure are that we can treat the SVT and in most cases we can get rid of it for good, leaving the child with a completely normal heart afterwards. The risks of this procedure are actually very low, but there are some that I just need to mention so that you're aware. The most frequent thing that happens is a bit of bleeding or bruising at the top of the legs. That tends to be minimal and it tends to go away by itself within a couple of days. There is a rare chance, around about 1 in 100, of damage to the child's heart through the procedure. There is a rare chance, even less than 1 in 100, of a small blood clot forming on one of the catheters and flying off around the body. And in some cases around the world, or not in our centre, that has caused patients to have strokes. There are even rarer cases reported around the world of people going through this procedure but not coming through. That can be very scary, but in the vast majority of cases, children come to the lab, they have the procedure done, they have no side effects or complications, and the successful procedure allows them to return back to the ward and eventually back to their normal life. Issue applied in Ecuador. There are only a few health facilities in Ecuador that offer this procedure. However, it has been possible to notice improvements in patients. In Guayaquil, the cost of a cardiac ablation goes around $30,000. When a patient comes in for an electrophysiology study and an ablation, we really never know what to expect. We could make predictions based on the patient's EKG or their age or other things, but a lot of the time we really don't know where the pathway is until we get in and get it started. An ablation is a procedure where wires are inserted through the veins, usually at the top of the leg. We use a, a mapping system or x-ray called fluoroscopy to bring those wires up into the heart to evaluate the heart's electrical system at rest and then intentionally to bring on an abnormal, either very rapid or slow heart rhythm that can help determine whether a patient needs a procedure called a cardiac ablation or even we use this type of evaluation to determine if some people need pacemakers or defibrillators. 
When somebody comes in for an ablation, most of the time, uh, my patients can expect to go home later that same day. Um, when you come into the hospital, an IV is placed. Through the IV, you're given medication that is called conscious sedation, which means you're brought to a level of being very comfortable during the procedure, but you won't be completely out or unconscious. Only rarely do we use general anesthesia. Most other arrhythmias start suddenly, so someone may be doing uh, no activity or minimal activity. Their heart rate will start racing, go from 70 beats per minute up to 200. It'll race for a period of time and then abruptly switch off. Um, after the ablation's over, a lot of my patients may feel a skip or a flutter. You feel like, oh my gosh, I think it's gonna happen again, but it won't. Cardiac ablation for arrhythmia is one of the only true curative procedures that we have in cardiac medicine. A lot of things we treat, but if somebody has a supraventricular tachycardia or a ventricular tachycardia, we very commonly can evaluate it, do an electrical study, and do an ablation. A lot of people, unfortunately, I meet and see and do ablations on, they'll tell me that they've had this for 20 or 30 years. So my main statement is, if you're having a racing heart, get it checked out. Conclusion. In conclusion, catheter ablation has emerged as a major tool for the non-pharmacological management of the vast majority of arrhythmias. The careful planning and knowledge of the various techniques, approach, and management of complications are the key components of successful VT ablation. So in summary, catheter ablation for the treatment of ventricular tachycardia is a procedure that really relies on us being able to precisely localize where the site of tachycardia is actually coming from. It is through real advances in technology that we've been able to now perform this procedure not only effectively, but safely, such as the use of 3D imaging, where we're able to visualize where that spot is actually coming from, or the use of magnetic remote navigation, where we're able to move catheters safely as well as precisely within the ventricle. Catheter ablation is an emerging tool in the treatment of ventricular tachycardia. And alongside other therapies such as medications or implantable cardioverter defibrillators, it should be a treatment that is considered any time you're dealing with ventricular tachycardia. Thanks for watching.